So this week, I want to talk about a topic, we got to go with the flow. I had an experience, God gave me that experience, and I'm like, ah, I need to learn this. So I'm like, let's just share it with everyone. So two weeks ago, I, had a, I, got, I went to a business conference in Mexico, and it was a great time. Uh, a couple days before, I invited my mom to join me. It was her 70th birthday. She doesn't want me to announce the age. But I'm like, Mom, you got to walk it with pride. You look like you're 68, so you got to walk with pride. <laughs> and so I, we, we had a fun time before there, and then I had the business conference, and it was wonderful. During the business conference, I got to experience for the first time riding on a hot air balloon. And we got to go about an hour away from Mexico City in an ancient village. It's called City of the Gods, and there's pyramids there. These pyramids are like, this was done like a thousand years before Jesus Christ. There was no horses, no donkeys, no mules, just by people's labor, dragging rock, volcanic rock. They made these pyramids. The pyramids took 450 years to make. It's pretty incredible. And so we got to go up on this hot air balloon and see everything. But I was very fascinated with the hot air balloon. Anyone here been on a hot air balloon? Hey, we got one. I think we have a fun community activity to do sometime, yeah? Anybody here want to go on a hot air balloon? Dang, we got, we, we got some goals here. Put, like, print it out, put it on your uh, mirror, think about it, visualize it. Who here, to be honest, does not want to go on a hot air balloon? <laughs> My man, why don't you want to go on a hot air balloon? Afraid? Do, do, do. Who else raised their hand? Why don't you want to go on a hot air balloon? You don't trust anything without an engine. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I was the same way. The first thing you notice when you get in the hot air balloon, you're like, okay, this thing's going to go up. Where's the steering wheel? I looked, and I looked, and I was like, wait, I see all these balloons going up. It was our turn next. There was no steering wheel. So then I became really fascinated. How does this hot air balloon work? Completely how the hot air balloon works is the pilots figure out what the current con weather conditions are. And based on the weather conditions, all they do the 100% of the time is they adjust. So they get out early, maybe hours before the hot air balloons go up, and they launch what's called, I think, pie balls. And there's these little helium balloons. They go up about 300 feet per minute. And they launch it up, and as it goes up, they just monitor what the wind is doing. Now, when you go in a hot air balloon, there's different aspects you have to understand. See, for us, we feel the wind, and we just think, oh, that's the way the wind's going everywhere. But I learned it's not. As you go to a different elevation, as you get higher and higher, the wind changes. So pilots have to deal with different factors. They have to deal with how's the wind going down here where you start, but they also have to deal with where is the wind going when it goes up top. So the wind blows one direction down low, but then as they do the pie ball and they watch how the wind's going, they see at what elevation the wind changes and goes completely the other direction. So they got it down. They monitor the winds going. They see where it is. And then they got a feeling, okay, first of all, is it too windy where it's unsafe? And if it all looks good, they start putting helium, hot air, into this balloon, and that's it. That's your whole engine. Hot air uh, becomes, hot air rises, it becomes lighter than the other air. That's what makes the balloon expand until eventually it just starts to go up. And then when it starts to go up, it's a little bit freaky of experience because it's like you just see it. And then all of a sudden you start lifting up. Whee! Ever as a kid, have you ever released a balloon by accident and just watch it fly away? That was me! 
but I was flying away. And you just start to go up. And then the whole time, the pilot's just adjusting and feeling. They, they, sometimes they spit over the side. They throw wood chips. They do different things to see which way the wind's going. And based on the, where the wind's going, they adjust. Usually, a hot air balloon pilot has four landing spots I think that they're going to shoot for. And 76% of the time, they hit one of those four spots. Then you're like, well, what do they do the other 24% of the time? They improvise. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. What if the whole thing works if they just surrender and decide to go with the flow? But what if they didn't? What if they're like, nah, the wind's blowing this way, but I want to go that way. I don't think the balloon gets off the ground. And if it does, maybe it crashes. It gets pretty dangerous. There's no engine. There's no steering wheel. Once you go high up, you're at the mercy of the pilot. You're like, all right, dude, I trust you. You know what you're doing. And after that, you're just flowing. So if you were to decide, nah, I'm not going to do that, it's dangerous. You could get hurt. It's definitely, maybe you don't even get off the ground. But what if you don't? What if you surrender? What if you go with the flow? Then all of a sudden, you have a beautiful ride. It's enjoyable, you're free, and it's majestic. Do I gotta click it again? It's beautiful up there. It's like, you're like a bird. And the balloons go pretty fast. I was surprised. And so what happens is it goes up. As you go up, you go one way, and they know that. But then the whole course is when you get to a high enough elevation, you start to blow the other way, other direction. And that's where they want to go. And then after that, it's just a bunch of adjustments. And how you adjust is based on how high you go. But when you decide to surrender and go with the flow, you're free. It's a beautiful ride. It's amazing. I recommend everyone do it. I think we should have a community event doing it. I think we all should do it, even though it doesn't have an engine. What we'll do is we'll have people pick. They can either jump out of the airplane or go in a hot air balloon. I think we'll get everyone to go. But I really thought, man, life is like this. There's always a flow. The whole world, your life, human history, God's always working, and there's a way God's working, and there's a flow. And we can decide to either go with it or against it. But too often, we're scared. We want to be in control. We don't want to just surrender and go with the flow. We want to be in control. So we're all tight. <laughs> no, I'm going to do it like this. Even if God's trying to bring us this direction. No, no, I'm going to be, no. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. We're all intense and all tight. We're not relaxed. And then what happens to things in our life? There's friction. There's resistance. We struggle. In that hot air balloon, you don't have a choice. You may think you want to go that, that way, but nope, you're going this way. As soon as you can just... Accept it, you can enjoy the ride. Even divine principle explains that in the course of histories, people's spiritual and intellectual levels have gradually been elevated due to the merit of the age and the providence of restoration. Hence, the quality of spiritual experience and the depth of religious and scientific knowledge have risen accordingly. In human history, there's a flow. The merit of the age is explaining that when you're in alignment with the flow, your whole existence, your whole being can rise. Look at where we're at technologically. Look where we're at spiritually. Look where we're at how we value human life. Everything is rising up. We're pretty blessed people because we get to live in the merit of the age. We got the merit of the age. Do you know how many good people were born as cavemen? 
they could have been great, but the marriage of the age wasn't on their side. Their goal was to figure out how fire worked. They did. It hurt. But we got the merit of the age. What happens if you go against the merit of the age? I looked at the uh, top companies at the turn of the century. See, before we were a nomadic species. Then we were in agricultural. Once we learned how to farm, well, that was game over. Now we could create communities and civilizations. We don't have to be nomadic anymore and just walk all over the place. And then we're farming, and then we discovered industry. And we could make machines. It was about the turn of the century, 1900s. And when I looked at the best, most valuable companies in that time period, they were all industrial companies. Why? Because that's the way God's wind was going. That's where humanity was. But now, when I, now we're not in that age anymore. So if those people are stuck saying, nope, I want to be at the, I want to be in the age of the industry, and they're stuck, these companies are getting obsolete quick. I looked at the most valuable companies now. Almost all of them are tech companies. Because that's the age we're in now. We're in the age of technology. So if you want to get on board and go with the flow, you got to get on board with technology. I remember the first time someone had a computer in their house and my neighbor said, oh, heck no, there's no way I'm ever going to have that. Why do my kids need it? We've never used it before. Can you imagine if you're a business, you don't want to use a computer? Or the internet? The companies that embrace the change, they rise with the tide. They get blown with success because that's where God is going. In our UC faith, we're in different ages. We're now in the age with true parents, with true mother. So in the UC faith, that's where that's where the wind is blowing. And if we want to go with the flow and rise accordingly, we have to recognize what time we're living in. All right, this is kind of long. It, didn't sh it looked really big on my computer screen, but here it doesn't. So I'm just going to read it, and everyone's going to practice listening. You must be prepared for the wave. This is from Challenge and Victory. It's from our founder, Reverend Moon. And in this particular case, he's talking about the flow of your life. There's a flow of human, our world, and the time we're living in. There's a flow of God's providence, but there's also a flow in your life. So you must be prepared for the wave. If you are riding the wave, however hard you may struggle, not to be carried on the current, you cannot resist it. If your destiny is to float on the current of the Hudson River, you must flow as it does. You may very possibly be like the waterfall or the water running past the rapids, but you must not become discouraged by the roughness of your course. If you are trained on this course, things to come will become easier for you to handle. If you take interest in what you are going through, and if you are thrilled to find new adventures, then when you are faced with even greater difficulties, you can tackle those with more zeal and capacity. But if you are unwilling to confront the problems occurring around you and are afraid of them, then you will not be able to turn the experience into training to face new problems. Only by having gone over the rocks and waterfalls can you lead yourselves to the heart of the ocean. A lot of you are going through stuff right now. There's things that are happening in your life. But you just got to, you have a choice. If that's the way the wind's going, you can choose to surrender, embrace it, and enjoy the journey, or you can fight and resist it. Most of the time, we choose the latter. I don't like what's happening. Why is this going like this? You should, especially it involves other people, and we want to control other people. Why is my spouse like this? Or why are my kids like this? Or why is my job like this? And da 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 Relax. 
Sometimes we have to go over the rocks and the valleys, but we're going to the ocean, baby. Embrace the flow. Trust that the things in your life are gifts. You're going through them for a reason. And start to surrender and trust God. Force negates. It's a principle. Imagine if you're like, I want my crops to harvest in the winter. How's that going to go for you? Even we may want them, we want the corn to harvest in the winter. Or what if you're like, I plant corn seeds, but I want potatoes. Ain't going to work. There's a flow. There's a process. There's a time period. Divine Principle talks about that everything has a growing period. We can't just force it to happen, but we want to. We want to just will it. Okay, I need this to change. I'm going to do it with all our might because we think it's our power. We think we can just magically control everything. As soon as we put that force, we negate all the beauty. We negate God from working because we're not trusting. Look at this flower. It's a bulb. If I water it, What's going to happen? And I keep watering it. Man, you guys are good at science. I was, I was a little nervous there with the pause. It's going to bloom. But what if I'm like, no, I want, it to, I want it to bloom now, and I start forcing it open. What happens to the flower? We kill it. We kill it. But too often in our lives, we're like that. We want to control everything. We want to use our, our force, our might to change stuff. But we don't trust and just relax and go with the flow. That's my mama, 70th birthday. I told you I took her out. Right? She doesn't look a day over 68. Yeah. Yeah, God bless mamas. Where would we be without them? We wouldn't. So I'll give an example. This happens often. Does anyone have the experience, raise your hand, where something you turned out better than you thought, but you couldn't have planned it to happen that way? Anyone ever had that happen in their life? So I was going to, we were going to, we're in Mexico, we're running around having a lot of fun, and we're going to have dinner, and I found this cool place. It was this uh, restaurant, and it had Inside, it's old. It's like 130 years old. And it has paint, old Mexican-style paintings, artwork all over it. It was pretty cool. So I'm like, we're going to go there. My mom's going to love it. I told her. She got really excited. We get it. We can't find the place. We're walking back and forth. Where is it? Eventually, I see the sign. And Google, which I thought Google's the almighty, what Google says is law, says it was open. But when I got there, the door was closed and the lights were off. I'm like, oh, okay. So we're like, what do we do? What do we do? And I was just going, what restaurants we go to? What restaurants we go to? And I found, I'm like, okay, that's what we got to do. Okay, that's not what I planned. And she, my mom was like, oh, darn, that's kind of, that was kind of, exciting. Like, yeah, we'll see what we can do. And then I find this restaurant called Azul. It looks pretty good. I'm like, okay, things look good. It matches up. I have a whole, where I want to go out to eat, I have a whole formula of how I calculate it based on the star rating, the number of reviews. I look at Google, I look at Yelp, I do all this stuff to calculate if it's worthy for me to go eat there. It's a science. In case you guys are wondering, the most important thing is not the star rating, it's the quantity of reviews. If people are noisy enough to want to review, there's got to be something there. Anyway, so then I thought, okay, Azul, we'll go here. So we go around, I, we walk away and we're like, oh, mom, if this doesn't work, then I guess because she's hungry and... Women get cranky if they don't eat at a certain time. And so I was like, okay, if we don't get there right at the right time, I'll, there's McDonald's or something. We'll figure it out. But I'm like, okay, we'll go here. So we walk another 10 minutes. We find the restaurant. I get to the front, and they're like, oh, yeah, we have an hour and a half wait. Yeah, that, that ain't going to cut it. It's going to be past her bedtime. I look, and this restaurant was beautiful. There were trees. They grow the trees inside the building. So it was like 
the trees would go up, there's canopy of leaves everywhere, and then the trees were all wrapped around with red lights. And then hanging from the trees were candles. So the whole room was illuminating with this red light and candles. It was cool. I'm like, I want to eat there. I turn and look, and there's a table outside in a restaurant that shares the same building. And I walk up, I say, can we eat there? They're like, yeah, of course, please eat here. So I'm like, Mom, let's just eat here, because then we get the ambience of this restaurant, and this will be good enough. We sat there, and my mom said it was one of the best meals she ever had. She can't swallow so well, um, it's this condition, so they had the perfect avocados and tomatoes with the little drizzle of the oil, and the, they had the soup, and how they made it was just perfect for her. And it's like, man, I couldn't have, that was actually the perfect place for her. But could I, did I know that that was the perfect place for her? No, it seemed like everything was going against me. But if I was just resisting and getting upset, why did that restaurant close? Google said it was open. Come on, Google, I trusted you. If I was like that, little did I know that actually God had a better place for us. But we just had to go with the flow. The flow was like, you ain't going to that restaurant. And then I thought the Azul one was great. But God was like, hey, almost, I prepared that one for you. Why am I talking so much about this experience? Because you can relate it to every damn part of your life. Just go with the flow. Relax. Trust in God. Smile. Enjoy. I know there's no engine in the hot air balloon, but it was so much fun. I was enjoying because I was like, you know what? I'm just going to trust. And the wind blew us. The wind actually didn't blow us to one of the four landing spots, so we had to improvise. We landed in the middle of a flower field, sunflowers. We knocked down like a thousand of those things. Whoever, whoever was growing, I felt bad. So in Mexico, they don't have the same standards in the U.S. I think they, one of my friends, hot air balloons, crashed into a house's fence and just dragged the fence with them. If those people were upset, I would just be like, go with the flow, baby. <laughs> but how cool is it? We landed, and then I'm like, oh, everywhere is like sunflowers. It was pretty cool. Things don't always go as planned. Exposition of divine principle again. So the question sometimes I have is, then Jonathan, what can I control? If we go with the flow, what, what's my part? What can I do then? Am I just merciless? Am I like a ship without a rudder? Uh-uh-uh. We have a role. Divine principle shares. God predestines the process of its accomplishment conditionally contingent upon the 5% responsibility of the central figure. That's you. Which must be completed in addition to the 95% responsibility of God. The proportion of 5% is used to indicate that the human portion of responsibility is extremely small when compared to God's portion of responsibility. Yet for human beings, this 5% is equivalent to 100% of our effort. So in your life, you might make a decision, and that decision is, I want to change this part of my life. That's good. I want it to change now, right now. Urgh. That's not so good. You're trying to force that flower open. There's a growing process. What's our portion? You got to decide in your life, how do you want to live? What do you want? That's part of co-creatorship. That's your responsibility. But as soon as you have that dream in your heart, and that could be career, ministry, it could be things in your personal life. Maybe you want to improve a relationship with someone. Maybe you want better health. Maybe you want to do this. There's something you want. You put that out there, and you commit to doing it, great. Just like being in the hot air balloon. I commit to go up to that hot air balloon. But after that, you release, the condi that, you release that expectation. You give it to God. And you just go with the flow. You trust. And if the wind blows you this way, you start adjusting. That's the way the wind's blowing. 
But you got to trust God has your back. There's a better restaurant for you than you think. To make the same analogy again, you go with the flow. If we can just do that in our lives, how much better things could be than we could ever thought. But just let go. Relax. Stop being so intense. Stop being so tight all the time. Just let it go. So I encourage all of you, whatever it is in your life where you feel some resistance, whatever you're fighting, let it go and trust God. Let's be, as a community, co-creators. If there's something in your heart you want, there's a way to get it. But you got to work together with God. You can't do it on your power alone. Just like if I want corn, i got to plant the seeds and i got to trust God, baby. i got to trust that if I water, that corn's going to grow. Let it go. And trust God. Join me in prayer.